Does a Christian have to be friends with everybody? I think oftentimes growing up, we kind of think that we are required to. The Bible says to love everyone. It says to treat your neighbor as yourself. But I want to push back on that just a little bit. And I'm going to use kind of an extreme example and then work my way backwards. Today in our reading, we read through Psalm 37, which is a really neat psalm. It's quite long. But in it, David warns us in verse 1, he says, Do not worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. So I want to start at the most extreme viewpoint. The Bible says that we're supposed to pray for our enemies, but do we have to be friends with them? A simple example of this is someone that's constantly irritating you or making you get angry. I think it's good to set up a healthy boundary with that person and realize that you can still love them, but you don't have to be intimate with them in order to do that. We see this with David, the man after God's own heart. Whenever Saul is trying to kill him and pursue him, Saul goes to David, Oh, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I repent. I'm not going to kill you. What does David do? Runs back into Saul's arms, gives him a big hug. No, David walks the opposite way. When people have repeatedly hurt you or abused you, there's no reason for you to be in an intimate relationship with them until you see true repentance on their part. I think the Bible teaches us wisdom and discernment using prayer, trust in the Lord. Obviously, I'm not looking to break fellowship with many people, but there is a line that has to be drawn somewhere that, hey, if you cross this boundary again and again and again, forgiveness is going to look a little different. Like, I'm going to forgive you. I'm still going to love you. The Bible says to even pray for your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. But I don't have to hang out with you all the time. I don't have to have an intimate relationship with you any longer. Of course, this might be different in something like family or marriage, but if we're just talking acquaintances and friends, I've actually had times in my life where I've had to push back against some people. Say, man, you're doing a lot of things that I don't want to participate in. I don't want to be doing these things. And so I can't be friends with you at this stage in our lives because I want to pursue the Lord. Verse 7, it says this, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or f- or fret about their wicked schemes. Basically, the Bible is telling us here that at the time, there's going to be things where it looks like evil people are prospering, but they're not going to long term. So if we stay around evil people, what is that going to make us do? Not prosper. The book of Proverbs warns us about this. It says a companion of fools leads to destruction, but there is wisdom among the wise. So walk with the wise and become wise. My basic encouragement for you today is verse 8. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to to harm. If you're around people right now in your life that are causing you to be angry and have rage, then a good thing to do might be to set up a healthy boundary with them. Let's say you're going to an event and you know the person that makes you frustrated or mad or angry is going to be there. I think the first thing that you should do is evaluate, do I really need to be a part of this? Should I go do something else instead? And if the answer is yes, I really have to be a part of it then walking in with the mindset of I'm going to turn away from anger. I don't have to be in an intimate relationship with this person. I may have to work with them, but I don't have to be intimately involved with their life. Anyways, I hope this I hope this helps you get some rough understanding of some boundaries. There's a really good book by Dr. Henry Clout called Boundaries if you're looking to learn more about this subject. Anyways, I'll see you back here tomorrow as we continue to read through the Bible together.